Hello, my name is Omar Ahmad. I'm a Clinical Research Fellow at University College London and I'll be speaking to you today about AI in colonoscopy. We've witnessed an explosion in research and development and applications for AI in colonoscopy over the last few years and it's an incredibly exciting time. We have multiple devices now actually approved for use in clinical practice, at least in Europe. So the question is, why have we seen this explosion? Well, AI in endoscopy is not new. Our colleagues in computer vision have been working in this area for well over a decade. But what's really led to the, the, the growth in recent years are a number of breakthroughs due to a few factors. Firstly is the advent of a subtype of machine learning known as deep learning. Secondly is the availability of large number and quantities of endoscopic imaging data. And finally, we've seen significant enhancement in computational power that's now available. So why is deep learning an advance? Well, deep learning is characterized by a type of a neural network known as a deep neural network, which is loosely inspired by human biology and based on the visual cortex. And the real benefit of and the advantage of deep learning over more classical or conventional types of previous machine learning is that these algorithms are able to learn themselves which features in endoscopic images are most important for a specific problem. So for example, for polyp detection or polyp characterization. And in the past, unfortunately, we required human endoscopists to define these features, which of course had a lot of limitations. So how are these algorithms developed? Well, a common misconception is that you receive a device in endoscopy, a plug and play box, or uh, an algorithm that's integrated into your endoscopy stack, and that it, it learns on the go or on the fly whilst you're doing endoscopy, and that's not true for now. Currently, these algorithms are very carefully developed in laboratories through a very careful training process where they are fed often millions of endoscopic images that have been painfully labelled by an expert endoscopist. And through multiple iterations uh, and multiple um, attempts at learning, the algorithms often improve over time until you get a best performance and then they're locked and deployed into clinical practice. So where are we now in terms of AI and colonoscopy? Well, um, there are multiple devices approved in Europe ready for use. And it's important to just get a bit of familiarity with some of the terms that are used. There are two main uses for AI and colonoscopy. Firstly, there is polyp detection, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Uh, and this is often abbreviated to computer aided detection or CADE. And then there's a second use, which is polyp characterization, which is often abbreviated to computer aided diagnosis, also known as CADEX. And actually some devices can uh, perform both functions at once. What's important to note is um, what is the evidence? Well, we're very fortunate for uh, AI and endoscopy to have some of the best evidence out of any application in medicine. We have numerous robust randomized controlled trials for computer aided detection, and a number of recently published meta-analyses have demonstrated that CADI systems lead to a significantly improved adenoma detection rate and a number of adenomas detected per colonoscopy. It should be noted that currently these are largely limited to non-advanced adenomas. For polyp characterization, uh, there are more limited trial data available and we're awaiting for further results, but certainly preclinical studies are very promising in this area. So what about the future? What's on the horizon? Well, we know that the current systems and versions are very likely to improve for polyp detection and characterization. But what's really exciting is that we are going to see an expansion in the number of applications for AI in colonoscopy and endoscopy, and it could well revolutionize practice. Firstly, um, there are systems already available uh, that have been demonstrated in trials that actually can help improve the quality of mucosal inspection on colonoscopy withdrawal by providing real-time feedback to the user. And we're likely to see advances on this where we will also get automated quality metrics being generated. And AI may even help you write your endoscopy report, which none of us like to do anyway. So finally, my final point is, um, look to really truly harness the power of AI in colonoscopy and get the best advantages both for endoscopists and for our patients. We need to very carefully develop robust collaborations with our 
AI developers and between endoscopists and professional societies. And I really strongly encourage you and urge you to go to gastrolearning.com to learn more.